President Obama's selection of Elena Kagan to the U.S. Supreme Court was not a surprise to most court insiders. The former dean of Harvard Law School has been on the short list of candidates from the day that Justice John Paul Stevens announced his retirement, and many felt the president was likely to pick her from the get-go, including my next guest. Vin Bonventry is a professor at Albany Law School. He's also the author of a blog, NewYorkCourtWatcher.com. And thanks for coming in, Vin. Good to be with you, Liz. So you're right. You win. Look at that. You predicted the whole thing. Well, two front runners, right, with Obama. Right. You were 50-50, so you didn't have very far to go. What are you 50-50? I was 100%. No, I know, but there were two front runners, and you picked uh, the right one. Yeah. Well, also there were like Merrick Garland, Diane Wood. There was also the uh, the fellow out in Montana, Sidney Thomas. I don't think he had much of a chance, too much of a paper trail. So what was it about Kagan that made you think she was a shoo-in? Well, right off the bat, I mean, this woman's extraordinary. I mean, let's not mince words. This woman is extraordinary. You look at her education, you look at her career, this is top flight. Her education, Princeton, Oxford, Harvard, I mean, the great universities of the world. Her career, she clerked at the United States Supreme Court. She was dean of Harvard Law School. She's now the Solicitor General of the United States. How can you beat that? Well, well, wait, you could beat it maybe with some judicial experience, which she has none of. Don't believe that for a second. Every time we have a nominee for one of these high courts, whether it's the New York Court of Appeals or the United States Supreme Court, the talk is, well, how much judicial experience? Let me tell you. The best judges on the United States Supreme Court, like on the New York Court of Appeals, disproportionately are those that had no judicial experience or very, very little. United States Supreme Court, William Rehnquist, Earl Warren, Louis Brandeis, Louis Powell, Hugo Black, Felix Frankfurter. You want me to go on and on? All men, incidentally. Well, now we have three women I on know, the court, and it's fourth. about time. Yeah, she'd be the fourth. That's right? right. And the youngest, if she makes it through. Only 50, that's right. Well, which the expectation is that she's going to be fine, but there are some political problems. One is, well, I mean, to actually the president's credit, right. she doesn't have much of a paper trail that they can pin her on, which was right. not the same for Sotomayor, correct? That's right. No paper trail, but uh, let's not be fools. We know darn well that Obama and his people know her positions on the big issues, certain right. seizure, uh, gay and lesbian rights, separation of church and state, abortion. They know what her positions are. Come on, and so do we. This woman is a liberal, no New doubt York, about it. No doubt. Isn't that wonderful? We have five native New Yorkers on the court. This must be driving the rest of the country crazy. Okay, but let's talk about that because that could actually come up during her confirmation, right? So part of the problem is she also has this issue with uh, military recruiters, which right. the conservatives are having a total that's, freak that's out right. about. So that's one problem. Also, the ultra-liberals don't think she's liberal enough. That's right. And she may not be liberal enough for the uh, super-liberals. That's okay. She's liberal enough. But look, with regard to being a New Yorker, we know what that, that's a proxy for. It's a proxy for she's a Jew. There's going to be three Jews on the court. Can you imagine? There's going to be six Catholics, three Jews. There are going to be no Protestant white Protestant men on the court. Can you imagine? That is a certainly a switch, right? It's amazing what has <laughs> happened with ethnics in this country. All Catholics and Jews on the court. Okay, but the, by, by contrast, Sotomayor actually had sort of a built-in constituency, even among right. Republicans, because right. she's a Latina. That's right. And yes, then the whole wise Latina common, and she had had some problems in terms of her statements. But however, what's the built-in constituency from some senator, a conservative from, say, the middle of the country, what's the incentive for that person to vote for her? Well, the incentive is that they don't want to make too big an issue about a, no a president's nominee to the United States Supreme Court when there really isn't something that's driving their constituents wild. You know what I mean? So usually you defer to the president, unless, of course, there's something really, really big, right? So, for example, suppose she had traveled over the weekend to Vermont and got married to a partner. I have no idea whether she has a partner. I have no idea whether she's gay or straight or what. But imagine she did that. That would be a big issue for the conservative Republicans to stand up right, right. and rile up their constituents. There doesn't seem to be anything quite like that, except perhaps 
for this idea that she opposed military recruiters on right. campus at Harvard. But let's but considering the fact that there are things coming down the pike, yes. I mean, the court is going to be dealing with some very big issues. Always. Gay marriage, probably one of them coming down. You yes. have abortion rights probably right. coming down, all this stuff. She's actually not going to change the balance on the court all of that much in terms of the outcome. Is not is that's the expectation, correct? She's It'll not still gonna, be a conservative. That's court. right. She's not going to change the balance Unless, of course, she's a little more conservative than Stevens, you know, especially on criminal law. We don't know exactly what our positions are on criminal law. We don't know exactly what our positions are on most things. But on criminal law, sometimes liberals are actually a little more conservative on criminal law mm -hmm. and they're more liberal on, you know, the social, political issues. We really don't know. Justice Stevens, who she would be replacing, was very liberal in the criminal realm. So actually the court may move, I don't know, but the court could move to the right a bit on criminal cases. But writ large, it's a liberal replacing a liberal. Okay, do you see any pitfalls for her at all going forward? We're not actually going to find out right. where she stands on very much because this is a very carefully orchestrated situation. Absolutely. This whole dog and pony show that will happen. She'll go <laughs> to the hill, she'll pay her courtesy call, That's she'll right. say hi to Schumer, she'll say hi to whoever, she'll go around, etc., and they'll ask her questions, then she'll go through the confirmation hearing, she'll That's be right. very vetted and very trained, That's and right. she'll say very little. So, so what are the pitfalls that might trip her up? Well, first of all, the presumption is she's going to be confirmed because she's extraordinary. We're not talking about a Sonia Sotomayor. I think Sotomayor. you have a position on this, Ben. I think no, you but, might like her, actually. No, but what I mean is Obama's had two picks. The first one was very mediocre. I mean, let's be honest. This was not somebody who was extraordinary, and her performance before the Senate was absolutely dreadful. I don't think I would have voted for her, except maybe I would have, because I like Obama. But this woman was dreadful. All right. Elena Kagan is phenomenal. Wait, Sotomayor was dreadful? She was dreadful. It was the worst performance before the Senate that I have ever seen, and I follow these things religiously. Whoa. It was the worst. And yet she made it anyway, so the bar's pretty That's low, right. then, if you, That's if right. you agree with that. That's right. She made it anyway. Huh. I mean, the Dems had control of the Senate, so right. she was going to make it. I mean, this whole thing about, you know, a wise Latina woman, this is ridiculous. Okay, but the, the, the atmosphere was different, right? Now we're going That's into right. a, we're a political year. That's right. The climate is different. That's right. So even though the bar Obama's been, weaker. Right, co correct. That's so right. even though the bar might have been set a little bit low by Sotomayor during right. her confirmation hearings, this could be a little bit more troublesome if, in fact, you have some Republican senator who's feeling pressure. I mean, just in, over That's the right. weekend, the Tea Party pushed out a guy in Utah. That's so, right. I mean, what might happen here in terms of the political dynamic? Right. But don't forget, the merit for Elena Kagan, and anybody who's being candid will tell you, there is no, there's just no comparison between the merit of Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor. Elena Kagan is much, much higher. Some of the pitfalls, again, what she did at Harvard with regard to military recruiters. It depends on how much traction that can get. Because ultimately, of course, she did allow military recruiters right. on campus, on the Harvard campus. And the fact of the matter is, her position at Harvard was fairly mainstream among law schools. I mean, the law schools, the official association of law schools, had a policy that no employers should be permitted on a law school campus that discriminated on the basis of sexual orientation. And we know that the military does discriminate. Now, I'm an Army vet. I love the Army. Their policy is idiotic. But they're actually, they might change it. They're going to change it, just okay. like the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals ultimately are going to okay same-sex marriage. We know that's ultimately going to happen. But